So we have Sarah Don Moore, and she put out this video titled, A Message to My Male Subscribers. The women have spoken. So she thinks it's important that men listen to what these women have to say. Okay. Let's listen to what these women have to say. Well, hello, everyone. If you're new here, my name is Sarah Dawn, and I'm just doing my part to put an end to the gender wars. I provide educational information about... I feel bad for the leopard that had to die to clothe this... I'm going to go ahead and say Frost Troll. I was going to say Draugr, but she's not that skinny. We'll say Frost Troll. Feel bad for the leopard that had to die to clothe this frost troll. About men and women to help bridge the gap, sprinkled with a little humor and a dose of sarcasm. So today I want to share a clip with you from a very impactful discussion I had with nine amazing ladies who all subscribe to my channel. I held a couple of different panel discussions, one with men and one with women which will be included in my course that will be launching in the middle of February. Ah! <sighs> of course, she sells a course. Well, why am I not surprised she sells a course? This is what all the grifters do. Male, female, red pill, blue pill. They talk about men's issues. They put shorts up on YouTube. They say women have high standards, single mothers or whatever. They, they do the most basic red pill speaking points. Once they get big enough, they drop red pill. They drop MGTOW and they sell a course. So yeah, if you want to hear from lonely women, buy her course. If I want to hear from lonely women. I'll just open up TikTok. You can sign up with a link in the description. No. So I'm in the process of moving into a larger place and we'll have a- Wow. So looks like all those YouTube shekels let you get a better house. Looks like all that simp blood helped you purchase a better house. You're making money now. You're making a lot of money because lonely men want to hear about these topics, but then they get sucked into you because you're not demonetized. You're not shadow banned. You don't lose your channel because you aren't a threat to the feminist system. You're really not. You know who is a threat to the feminist system? Undead Chronic. Hammerhand. Sir Yidus. They are threats to the Red Pill system. They've been demonetized. Uh, me and Hammerhand lost channels. Ruby the Party Frog is a threat to the feminist system. He lost his channel. New studio where I'll be doing regular panel sessions. I'll be inviting men and women to have discussions with one another on my YouTube lives. And I will be the moderator. My goal is for each side to be able to have a robust discussion with one another. And I, there's no discussion to be had with feminists. I mean, I think about the time I talked to not so erudite Lauren Southern. We had a discussion, but it wasn't really a discussion. They weren't listening to what I was saying. They were just going off their programming. They had to disagree with what I said because, you know, they're feminists. Their feelings get involved. And when feminists have their feelings get hurt, oh, you know they will stop listening. Their, eel, their ears will close off like the U.S. oil exports to Japan closed off right before Pearl Harbor. And for everyone to watch. My family is scared for me, but I love a challenge. So I guess we'll see how it goes. If you want to volunteer to be a part of this, write me at saradonmore.com. And in the subject line, put panel discussion. I will need men and women. So this particular panel covered a whole host of topics as to what women find attractive in the opposite sex, why intimacy <sighs> dries up in a marriage, I'm going to need to pour some more mead before I listen to this bullshit. And I spilled it. Damn it. 
Uh, it's all over my hand. It's getting on my knees. It's some huckleberry meat. I'm going to have blue knees. Press F in the chat for Chronic's blue knees. Damn it. Well, oh, it's on my... At least the keyboard's safe. Well, I have the medication I need in the form of ethanol to listen to this bullshit now. Guess we should continue. And lastly, I asked them what was one thing that they wanted to share with the men who subscribed to my channel. It was authentic, real, and exactly what this channel is about. I hope you enjoy. As well. I won't. I think, and this was like... So, uh, we got traits that make men attractive. <sighs> These women aren't going to say being tall. These women aren't going to say being ripped. And they're not going to say being rich. They're going to say some, this is the thing. Don't listen to what women say. Look at their actions. Don't look at what women say are attractive. Look at the men they date. Well, well women, these women say that emotionally available, communicating men are attractive. But they always end up dating Giga Chats. They date dudes that don't take shit. They date dudes that go to the gym. They date dudes that are tall. Yeah, well, they're talking bullshit. Don't listen to them. Kind of like a biological switch I wasn't ready for in myself, but like when they give off, like they would be a good dad. <laughs> like that's. So this chick says she's attracted to men that looks like they'd be a good dad. This chick. Well, looking at your face, you should already be a mother. But seeing how you're on a panel... Okay, let's just go through this panel. We've got Sarah Don Moore right here. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> oh, man. This is a top left panel as an eye workout. I'm not trying to look at this. Then we got um, Imperator uh, Becky. She's got her makeup on. She has the eyeliner on. Um... I don't see anything down here. No tatas. Not just she could be she's in the dangerous range. She could be a good body weight or kind of chubby, but she the fact that she has to put this much makeup on makes her look um oh, well, you know. She could be old. We got this chick. I'm not trying to go to the trailer park, right? I'm not trying to, you know, trade a a nice crystal of meth for a blow job in the back of my Chevy Lumina. So no. So no. 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 This chick has potential. Um she's probably 28, so like maybe smash and dash. She got a choker on, so you know she takes out the booty. Um she got a flower in her ear, not sure what that's about, but here's the thing. This chick was probably like super hot 5 years ago. But right now, uh we got the hijab I, I don't know. She's just Look, to be a a Muslim or Arab girl to get my attention, you have to be pretty freaking hot. And that's not you. Let's go down here left. Plain Jane. Um she she could be part of the Transformer movement. Uh not impressive. This one, she, I don't know, maybe it's a bad screenshot. Looks like a bitch face. This one's this one's the one talking about I want a guy that looks good with kids. You should already have kids by now. You should probably already be married, but you're here on this panel. This one. Ah! Ah! Oh my. Ah! Ah! This chick needs to be in the hijab. This chick needs to commit this chick to be a Muslim because I am not about this chick. This chick, no. Stop it. Stop it. That's such a weird, awkward, <laughs> like, attraction trait that I was never prepared for to find attractive. But I think it means like, for example, like they're reliable, they're consistent, like they're dependable, um, like they follow through with what they say. Like that's something that I think is very attractive. So yeah. And of course, I'm sorry guys, there's ads. So let's talk about men in the friend zone. I think I see a hundred different titles and videos. Let's talk about the friend zone. I'm not trying to be friends with any of these women. I'm not trying to be friends with any of them. Um, 
but they, they they shouldn't get insulted by that because like okay, low key guys, um let Chronic expose himself real quick. I'm not friends with any woman. Why why would I want a female friend? I already have friends. I already have friends. I don't need female friends. Female friends are emotional vampires. I don't need or want them. Get the hell out of here. Videos and posts and TikToks and Instagram. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this friend zone is just like a, such a thing that people talk about. So at a time, I will say it was very unfair to men. Um, I would keep them in a friend zone just to keep my options open, which is hypocritical because I wouldn't want a man to do that to me. So the Jabi says that she keeps men in the friend zone to keep her options open. Look, guys. Men are never put in the friend zone. They allow themselves to be put in the friend zone. Right? Like, if I'm talking, if, if I'm in a group, and this is the only time I, that that I would be having female friends is if I'm in a group of people or there's like a group of people I'm talking to, like I'm hitting on the barista from a coffee shop and I talk to the other baristas and then like, you know, I'm sitting there working or writing the comic or whatever. And three or four baristas get off at once and they all sit down at the table and talk to me. It's like a dude and three chicks. Like, yeah, they, they, I'll talk to them. I get to know them or acquaintances. I've seen them 10, 20 times. They think they're my friend. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, Sure, we're friends, but I'm not hanging out with them. I'm not buying their Ubers to get from the bar to the home to be safe. There's different levels of friendship, but those women would say I'm a friend. Sure, of course those women say I'm a friend. So that's the only opportunity, the only period where someone says I'm a friend is if we're, we share the same social circles and I get to know them, I make jokes. That kind of stuff. Then I make conversation. I'm social. But are we good friends? No. I, I'd say acquaintances. But the the threshold of friendship has been lowered so much. Yeah, I guess I'd say that I'm friends with them. But I'm not texting them about their boyfriends. I'm not, like, helping them out when they got dumped. I'm not doing any of that. But this chick just said, I keep guys in the friend zone to have options open. No, 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 no. You shoot your shot, guy. L listen, man. Look, guys. You shoot your shot as soon as you think you're attracted to a woman. Don't waste times. Don't waste hours. Don't waste days. Don't text someone. Like, don't waste your time with an acquaintance hoping it'll become a romantic relationship. Women will appreciate confidence and aggression, right? So if you walk up to, if you're in the coffee shop, if you're at a bar, library, bookstore, whatever it is, you see a chick that's attractive. If you become friends with her and then ask her out on a date, let's say you have a 50% chance of securing the date. If you walk up to her, have a conversation, and at the end of the conversation, you say, I think you're really cute. I want to take you on a date. Your chances of getting that date is 60, 70%. It, it is more. Now, some chicks are different. Some chicks are like, I want to date my friends. I want to get to know you, whatever. But most women will appreciate confidence because most women, like most men, they get their relationships from dating apps. It doesn't, it, it doesn't take confidence to swipe right. But if you meet a chick in person and you ask her out and you compliment her, you're beautiful. I think you look great. I love that dress. Whatever it is. And you ask her out, you got 70, 80% chance. Let's make it out. Let's, let's change the advice. Let's say you were an ugly motherfucker. You're disgusting. You know, uh, asking at your friends, you got a 5% chance. But if you ask out a chick you just met, and you're confident, and you approach her, that goes to a 12% chance. You're over doubling your chance. Okay? You get that?
And guess what? If she doesn't think you're attractive, if she doesn't think she wants to date you, if she has a boyfriend, if she if her standards are too high, she's going to say no. Okay? It sucks to get rejected, guys. But a woman who isn't sexually attracted to you, a woman who has a boyfriend, she says she doesn't want to date you, good. Good. Now you can stop wasting your time. All these young brooders out here wasting their time trying to be friendly with women and then ask them out, bullshit. Just ask them out. Move on. Your time is precious. These thoughts, attention, it's not precious. Back to this chick. But I definitely took advantage of those things in my 20s. Um, And uh, it's selfish. And I think when a man respects himself enough to be like, don't keep me waiting. I'm not going to entertain you when you entertain me. Then you can get out of the friend zone in a very quick way if it's done like tactfully. And it's like, listen, don't string me along. Like, this is what I want. If it's not you, just... And then I'm like, oh, well, I haven't seen you in this light, actually. I kind of saw you as someone who was always going to be there. But maybe the fear of... There you go. She just said, confident men make that puniti wet. Losing you makes me assess like what you mean to me or just the fact that you're taking on this more direct approach of like, I know you have a bunch of guys, but this is what I want and I'm not competing with anybody. Don't waste my time. Bye. Then I'm like, oh, hold on one second. You know, it has it's happened to me like one time. I'm not saying it happens all the time. But when someone respects themselves enough to speak up and say, I know the game that you're playing and I'm not going to participate. I'm like, wow, OK, I have to. She makes a good point. It's not just like respect yourself, respect yourself as a person. Respecting yourself means respecting your time. Don't waste time with low-value women. Don't waste time with women that aren't attracted to you. If every single man on the planet stopped wasting time on women who were clearly not attracted to them, this feminism shit would be over in a night. It'd be over instantly. This simping shit would end. Okay? But the simps... I I see two ways here. Either the simps, they don't recognize they're unattractive to these women, or the simps think, the simps believe the lies they were told by their mothers, by their sisters, by their fathers, by the weak feminists in their lives. If you just keep on doing nice stuff, you'll get puniti. So part of me feels bad for simps. Part of me despises them. It's a love-hate relationship, really. To respect you because you're commanding respect so over time those amazing friendships they do want something more and i don't and and the same thing i used to be naive and think you know they think like i do like we're just amazing friends but the, a lot of times they don't and that's why we have the idea of because women and men can't be friends when a man okay when i say women and men can't be friends I'm talking about the majority of male-female friendships. Sure, there are men and women who can be friends, right? You can be friends with your sister. You can be friends with the ugly chick, the fat chick. You can be friends with the woman you see at work when you're married or you're in a relationship. But the majority of male-female friendships, the male wants something more. Always. Okay? So, when I say don't be friends with women... 90% of you guys, those words ring true. Now, for the 10% of you guys that have a female friend who is actually a good friend, me saying don't be friends with women isn't going to really affect that. She's been a good friend, whatever it is. But for the majority of male-female friendships, it's a waste of time on the man's part. Let me try to think of the female friends I have That stayed through the hard times that I'm still friends with today. Oh, yeah. They all disappeared. Oh, they got a boyfriend. They disappeared. Oh, they moved. They disappeared. I think the male friendships I've had. I've got dudes I've been friends with for 10 plus years, for decades. Guys I've been friends with that, you know. Help me out in really hard spots. Yeah, I'm going to focus on the male friendships more than the female friendships. Because they are more rewarding to me. The female ones, as soon as they get a boyfriend, they're gone. 
As soon as they move, they're gone. That's the majority of cases. Never had a female friend that stuck around. Just my experience is not an argument, but I'm sure most of you guys listening understand you've had a female friend that did not stick around. They're friends of convenience. And that's a, most friendships, right? Like most friends you make are friends of convenience. You just happen to go to the same school, the same work, whatever it is. But now if you look male versus female, 100% of my female friends are friends of convenience. 90% of my male friends were friends of convenience. But that 10%, those friends you have that stick around, those lifelong friendships, investing in those is a million times more productive than attempting to be friends with a thought. They can remain in the friend zone, but I think guys want more and they have to understand that we don't always see it that way and we want to just keep them as friends. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, so if you want more and she doesn't, break the friendship up. No one's going to roast you. 